<clears throat> hey, 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 Nikki Brown here. No matter where you are, what part of the world you're in, I hope that you're having a good day. So, um, I think I have a few messages. Um, well, not a thing, but I'm not sure if I should say them or if I should just let the cards speak for themselves. Um, I may let the cards just speak for themselves today. But again, I hope you all are well. And living your life like it's golden to the best of your ability. Um, these are press-on nails, so a few of them popped off. So it's going to be okay. <laughs> I just haven't put them back on yet. And, um, Hello, my... Okay. Um... So, uh, let's see who we're talking about. Already the privileged lady in message of concern wants to pop out with the mature man on the bottom. <laughs> and the message of concern is a 14, which reduces down to a five and a more sure man is a five and in geometry and the neurology five represents change and someone who loves freedom it's a high energy vibration um, it's someone who can make friends really quickly it's someone who's creative um, but it, on the flip side it could also be somebody who's unstable and patient and independent, which we're not supposed to be independent, we're supposed to be interdependent. And a lot of people think that um, being in control or being in possession um, is what how we're supposed to be in relationship, and that's all wrong. And that's funny because I was trying to figure out how to... <laughs> deliver the message and it just kind of naturally came out in that way what we see in those cards so great the energy is right on point <laughs> I'm just going to cut them in half let's see who are we talking about we are talking about an official person this could be an officer of the law um, 22 is the master builder number, and this official person is a 22, which is a powerful number four. Um, the number four is someone who builds with structure and order, someone who's a deep thinker. Um, they're willing to work hard. Um, a number four in tarot can also be the emperor, someone who's respected, a father figure. Uh, male or female, and someone who knows how to plan strategically, build an empire, right? Toil and labor. Yep, that's the work. That's building with structure and order. That's, um, you know, strategic planning, um, which is, this is a 38, which reduces down to an 11. And 11 is the master spiritual number. This is someone who's a giver, who's intuitive, who, who, who respects unity, 
who was a humanitarian and innovator. Um, um, on the unrighteous side, this could be someone who's sensitive, potentially harmful, has bad temper, or is very temperamental or moody. Um, very and, and oversensitive, not just sensitive, but oversensitive, and can be manipulative as well. Um, whereas the official person at 22 can be someone who's overly emotional and destructive or dramatic, right? <clears throat> then we have a thief, and thief is 24, which reduces to a six, so... Um, sixes usually represent an equal amount on both sides, right? Um, six is also the peace lover or the, excuse me, represented by Venus energy. So it could be somebody who comes in um, or shows up as this um, family-oriented person who's very knowledgeable and understanding and responsible and calm, right? But on, the, but on the flip side, they're really explosive and superficial and jealous and possessive and unwilling to change that energy. Um, this could be Libra energy. Um, in the tarot, the number six is the lover's card. Um, so lovers could be, of course, partnership, deep love, balance of you know, the two together, or two people together, um, and the lover's card is represented by the sign of Gemini, but the number six is Libra. This could also be someone who's very clairvoyant and intuitive, um, and this is also represented by the pineal gland or the third eye chakra. Um, the color indigo, again, it's intuition, it's, lucid, it's lucidity. It's meditation, it's trust. So this person may come in um, as if they're truly trusting, but they're really a thief. So just be mindful of, of that. Um, this person is represented by the planet of Saturn. Um, and if you research Saturn, you can find out more about Saturn. Um, Saturn is our karmic sign. So this person may be someone that you still need to um, heal some karma with. Or you could be that person. Um, then we have the Concern card, which is a 33, which is another number 6. Right? Um, again, the 6 could be those Geminis. And um, it could be be relationships but it could also be on the reverse side it could also be breakups divorce arguments discord and regrets because again this person is coming in as a thief right and pretending to be something that they're not um, or you could be pretending to be someone you are not and you're really and you really could be a thief this is someone who is experiencing some type of suffering um, this could be somebody who has a problem with obedience or following rules. This is someone who causes conflict or is always in conflicting situations. This could be someone, you know, holding back love. Um, or this could be a message that you need to learn, learn to love yourself first. And a lot of people disagree with self-love, but really that is what we should do we cannot be good whole happy and complete for somebody else if we don't have that for ourselves within ourselves mature man the mature man did come out again fives represent change in numerology and gematria represented by the color blue in the planet of mercury and right now we're in mercury retrograde this is someone who loves freedom who may change quickly and often um, who has a lot of energy, who's very creative. Again, makes friends quickly, learns fast. Um, this is represented by the throat chakra, so this person may, you know, freely speak their mind. They're a good communicator, creative, um, have healing energy. Um, this could be a Scorpio or a Leo. Um, 
Now, in tarot, the number five card is the Hierophant. So this is someone who practices, you know, tradition or is traditional. Um, this could be some type of religious ceremony like a marriage. Um, this one, this could be someone who likes to fit in or wants to fit in. And so in essence, it could be someone who's not fully being themselves. They're pretending to be something that they're not so that people will like them instead of being who they really are, right? Because they think that who they really are is not good enough. They don't see their own value. They don't think that they're worthy of deserving of being who they truly are and showing up as they truly are. And we see lots of examples of that. Um, and again, on the unrighteous side, this could be somebody who's unstable, impatient, avoidant, ind too independent, bored easily, aggressive. Um, independence, again, we should be interdependent, and that is helping each other and not just saying, I can do it by myself, or I'm the one in charge. That's ego. And that was another topic that has, was on my mind, that a lot of people think that they're supposed to be in control or possess, um, and that there should be a leader when really there should be, you know, unity and a togetherness and a working together, not, oh, I'm in the lead and I have to be in control, whether it be of a household, a job, uh, family struck whatever it is like that saying it takes a village is was put in place for a reason because it doesn't take a leader it takes a village <laughs> so um there's that and I actually think I want to quote that I put that on Facebook What do I want to want to call I'm sorry, y'all. Just give me one more second. I really didn't want to <clears throat> lose that thought. Okay. <clears throat> oh, wow. And then we have change. So I have a few things to say about this card. So, again, five is represented by... The number five represents change in gematria and numerology, right? But as you can see at the top of this card, it's a nine. And in gematria and numerology, a nine is completion because it is said that there are only numbers that truly exist are one through nine, and then you have special numbers like 11 and 22. All other numbers reduce down to a number between one and nine. In tarot, though, 10 is completion. And, and 10 is also the world card, which the world is a 21, um, but it ends the, the tarot cycle and then starts back over again at zero with the fool. Okay, 
So, but in, in tarot, the number nine is the hermit. This is someone who needs to go within for clarity and someone who's on a request for personal truth. That is in the upright. In the reverse, this could be somebody who's lonely or this could represent loneliness. This could represent somebody who's repeating past mistakes, which basically means that this person needs to learn a karmic lesson and they're not learning it. Which can mean that this person, sorry, that was a text coming in. Which can mean this person is needs to learn a karmic lesson. And when you don't learn a lesson, it repeats itself. Right? Um, this could also be someone who's in isolation. Whether it's self-isolation or a forced isolation. I was pretty much forced into isolation when I got injured at... The job the, the last job I worked on right this is um, someone who is distant this could be physical distance this can be emotional distance which brings me to another topic that I wanted to discuss you know some people have parents who may have been there physically but they were emotionally absent or emotionally distant so the child still did not receive the nurturing and the balance that they need from having both parents there to balance out that energy. And so they grow up to become adults who um, basically are emotionally unavailable. They don't like to commit, um, you know, some of them may grow up to cheat. And I'm not gonna say that this applies to all, but a lot of the things that we see go on usually stem from childhood. They're not something that just happened overnight and the person just so happens to be this way. That is not how it goes. Um, but again, um, you know, this is someone who has a need for community and connection. That's the hermit, someone who needs community and connection in the reverse. And although we're looking at this card in the upright, I'm giving you both sides of the coin. Well, both sides of the spectrum. Um, because again, usually, because Dr. Frances Caress Wilson, she called it lap time. When a child doesn't receive enough lap time or l love, hugs, kisses, and affection as a child, they grow up to be someone who needs a sense of community or connection because they did not get that as the child. Right, because it literally takes a village. It does not take just an individual. And although a mom can do a great job, really and truly, no one should be raising children by themselves. Not even really a couple. Literally, it takes a village. When some of us were younger, at least I know for myself, you know, neighbors would discipline children. So if you were doing something that you had any business doing, you might get in trouble from your neighbor and your neighbor would tell your parent and you would get in trouble again when you got home. Right? That was the dynamic. It was more of a village in the mindset. Now you have people, oh, you better not say nothing to my child or you better not touch my child. Now I know that some people may have gone overboard with it, but really we should still have that village mindset. But I'm going to leave that alone. Anyway, so number nine is change. So it's time for change, whether that be spiritual change or physical change. And in this card, it looks like somebody's moving. And somebody could be moving on up like the Jeffersons because this looks like a brownstone. And brownstones nowadays are, you know, pricey because people want them. They're in high demand, especially if you live in Harlem. Um, or anywhere in, in New York or New Jersey where brownstones are um, not as popular. If I'm not mistaken, brownstones were traditionally made of limestone, which is a very hard um, substance. And I think that may be what the pyramids are made of as well. Uh, I don't think it's like 100% limestone, but I think maybe it has a certain percentage of limestone in a brownstone. Um, so whatever clay or dirt is makes up the brown part and then I think it's mixed with some limestone um, 
don't quote me on that one. Um, you can do the research, but I do recall reading something like that a few years ago, um, but I, I can't recall in full detail off the top of my head. But I do know that brownstones are in high demand in the north, um, and they're great structures. They were built well, and although they kind of resemble a townhouse where they're attached to one another, um, usually they have at least three floors and they may look small on the outside, but they usually go back pretty far and they're usually a good size on the inside. So somebody could be about to move or again, this could be a spiritual change that someone needs to make. Someone could be in hermit mode. Let's get out the tarot. Um, and in Gematria and Numerology, Mars, I'm um, sorry, the number nine is represented by Mars. Um, again, it's completion. It's someone also who's multi-talented, who's a humanitarian, who's psychic, who's very sympathetic and very tolerant and accepting of others, right? But on the flip side, it could be somebody who's hard-headed, right? It could be somebody who's restless. Um, a bit impractical, financially careless, someone who's moody, um, overly emotional and sullen, right? Um, money is the love of money is the root of all evil. So this could be somebody who just focuses on money, um, and not and money as a resource or money as energy, money as I need to have more money than you type of mentality. And this and and not wanting to help people with that money. And this could also be Sagittarius energy. All right. What does the collective need to see today? What messages? We've gotten a lot of messages. What does the collective? Strength. <laughs> Somebody needs to have strength, inner strength, courage, um, bravery, confidence, compassion. Someone needs to be tame or calm. You know, have control or self control. Someone needs to overcome their self doubt. Someone needs to be more focused. Someone needs to practice persuasion. Maybe you have a business. Um, maybe you are a business and you are a life coach or a Reiki healer. And so you need to persuade others that you are who they need to heal. Um, you need to um, influence others or be an influencer or be influenced. The strength card is the number eight. Again, taking control, practicing self-love and confidence, and also having good health and being in good health. This is also represented by the solar plexus chakra, which is represented by the element of fire and I do. So what are you doing? What are you doing to help the planet? What are you doing to help humanity? What are you doing to help others, right? Um, the, the, the zodiac sign, of course, is Leo because, you know, there's a lion. But then there's also the infinity sign, which is a sideways number eight, right? And the Leo is also ruled by the planet of the sun, right? It's, you see a, a whole background full of yellow. Um, the sun is clarity and light and strength and health and... Strength begins with a choice to be kind to oneself. Right? So be the sunshine in your own life. Um, 
And although this didn't come out in the reverse, I'm going to share the, the opposite as I've shared with the Kipper cards. Um, the number eight or the strength card in tarot, this could be somebody who abuses their power or could be considered a disgrace. Someone who lives in fear and someone who has total discord or lives in discord, who struggles, who's very prideful, um, who's weak because they're living in their ego. Um, again, this is someone who needs to practice self-confidence and support um, from others. So, you know, we don't, we shouldn't just be giving, we should also be receiving because everything should have an equal balance of give and take. Or everything should have an equal balance of um, yin and yang. Um, again, we should be interdependent with a village mentality and not, oh, just me, mine, and I'm going to get mine, and I need to own, control, and possess in order to feel um, validated or wanted or needed. That should not be the mentality at all, right? Um and then just in terms of the number eight, this is represented by the color gray. This is someone who is a manager, but again, not a controller or a dictator. This is also Saturn energy, which is that karmic energy. This could somebody be somebody who's very tense or narrow-minded, materialistic, forceful, authoritative, with that God complex, not in a good way, right? Again, it's the eternity or infinity sign. This could be an Aquarius, Pisces, Cancer, or Virgo, in addition to a Leo. Because again, I'm focusing on Gematria and not just the tarot card itself. Which tarot, I explained what it is in tarot already, right? But eight is also wealth and power. This is also somebody who's a creator. So this could definitely be a female, um, but it could also be a male. This is someone who's very tolerant who loves sharing, who is understanding, which we don't, you know, we don't necessarily like the word understanding, but someone who is knowledgeable is a better way to say understanding, right? Someone who has accurate knowledge and someone who is ready, willing, and able to serve others. Again, equal give and take. What else? This is someone, <clears throat> again, whenever we talk about tarot, it could be you, it could be the energy of someone around you, or it could be the energy of someone coming towards you. So this is the heartbreak card, right? It is the th three of swords. So obviously it's the number three. This is Jupiter energy in Gematria. This is someone who has above av average intelligence. Someone who's a teacher, someone who's kind-hearted, a good communicator, which also includes listening, active listening. So someone who's a good listener. Could be a poet, a writer, a wordsmith, a joker, right? But this could also be, and again, I'm focusing on the number three. This could also be someone who's a liar, who's extravagant, who has scattered thoughts, who's very superficial, right? And this is... Um, now, on the card, it's the third eye chakra, um, but the color yellow is the solar plexus chakra, which is also could be known as like the navel area, right? Um, so the navel is the source of vitality and energy, desire, power. Um, could be a Gemini. This is, you know, on, and on the third day of the week, we should practice good communication skills, right? This could be a Libra. And um, this is also more Saturn energy. Now, specifically, <laughs> the three of swords, because again, I was just talking about the number three. Now, the three of swords in particular, right? Again, it's heartbreak, it's divorce, it's loss, it's depression. Or it could be somebody who had or is having surgery. Now, in the reverse, 
Um, it could be someone who's coming to apologize. Someone who's recovering from a loss. Um, or someone who's healing physically, right? So if someone has surgery, they could be in the process of healing. Um, however that goes. But this could also be somebody who's very insulting, a fraud. This could be someone's heartache ending and moving on as well. Um, heart, it could be heartbreak, betrayal, loneliness, removal from a situation, absence, division, depression, separation, sadness, heartache, unhappiness, upheaval, grief, sorrow, upset, disorder, confusion, and alienation. And... In terms of the word happy, something has to happen. So I'm more lean, I'm more lean toward the word joy because we can have inner joy, serenity, and tranquility and that sense of calm, right? King of Pentacles, that's more third eye chakra energy. Um King of Pentacles is someone who's very solid and practical. We know that Pentacles are grounded. Energy is usually Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn, and they're very grounded and um, kind of more traditional and stable types of people um, who enjoy material success. Not that other signs don't, but um, that's what most of them see as success, right? Um, but they are also... This is also someone who could use their assets wisely. This is a sense of security, a solid foundation, stability, a home. Um, you know, again, material things. So it could be a car. Um, this is someone who's mature and grounded, successful, wealthy, a businessman or businesswoman. Because it could be, it's just, it's energy. So it could be male or female. This could be someone who's bettering themselves who's not a risk taker. Again, earth signs tend to stay safe, we'll say, um, because that's their idea of being grounded. They don't like to go outside the box. They like to do the same thing that has already been done and not try to reinvent the wheel. Whereas you may have someone else who is more of a risk taker. Now, they may be a risk taker when it comes to, say, investing in the stock market, but they're not a risk taker when it comes to, say, maybe starting a business. They would rather have a job that's paying them a set amount and they can they, they feel like they can rely on. Although there's really no such thing as job security, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, this is Jupiter energy and the king of pentacles in particular could be a Taurus. Um... Again, but this is someone who typically would not be a risk taker, but someone who has an empire or who knows how to build an empire. This could be someone who's thriving, who has is considered to be in high status, or as Kevin Samuels would say, a high value man or a high value woman. This is someone who is stable, secure, um, enterprising, and providing. So it could be a good provider, male or female, because again. This concept of leadership is, is not something that we should be practicing. We should be practicing interdependence in the village mindset, right? And so this is just one person within the village who has that established. Um... This could be somebody who's on the on the unrighteous side. This could be somebody who's very overindulgent, excessive, and possessive. Because again, we should be interdependent and not feel like, oh, I need to possess this and I need to possess that and live in excess and above our means. That's not what we're supposed to do. Or we're not supposed to think we're better than other people. They could also be jealous. They could also um, not follow through with things. So starting something and never finishing it. And they could also be very stubborn and argumentative, right? 
Then we have the moon. What is in the dark always comes to light. This is 18, which is also a number nine. And this is more third eye chakra energy. Um, this could also be uh, Pisces. Um, but it is water, so it could also be a Scorpio because we see a scorpion right in the photo although moon energy is typically with associated with cancer um, this is someone who's very intuitive this could be some type of illusion because in the picture you see like the sun the man and the moon, but then you see the sun behind it, illuminating it, you know. Um, this could be someone's dreams. Again, the third eye chakra is lucidity. It could be someone who has lucid dreams. This could be something that comes across as very vague, unstable, deceptive. This could be something or someone who makes you feel anxious, afraid. This could be some type of misconception, misunderstanding. This could be something in the subconscious mind or some type of insecurity, right? This could also be unseen problems coming or voluntary changes that need to be made. In the reverse, it could be, again, truth and clarity coming to the light. Um, the truth being revealed, the message coming forth in your dreams, because we do get messages in our dreams, whether it's a lucid dream or a deeper dream state. Um, again, it could be fears, insecurities, um, but it could also be saying that you can see aspects of the truth in some way, shape, form, or fashion, especially if you're using your intuition. This is a great reading. And followed by the sun. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Right? So the sun is um, yellow. This is your solar plexus chakra. Fire element. Right? It is the sun. Right? It is positivity, freedom, fun, success, optimism, vitality, joy, confidence, self-expression, good luck enthusiasm happiness truth openness and even pregnancy because we do see that there is a child in the photo so if you're wanting to become pregnant you are pregnant or potentially you want to become pregnant in the future i can see that happening for you or you may see that happening for yourself again whatever is in the dark is coming to the light right um this is material happiness this is a joyous outcome, right? Which, of course, is great. We, we like to see joyous outcomes. This could be an invitation to celebrate and honor your own personal growth. If you have a yes or no question, the answer is yes. I shine my light on the world around me and my radiance attracts more success. Yes. Um, maybe you're saying affirmations, uh, or doing something inspiring. Um, maybe it's a good idea to share that with people and radiate your joy out into the world. And that's your way of giving back or one of your ways anyway. Love this reading. This is the only card that came out in the reverse. Isn't that something? <laughs> And this is the Eight of Pentacles. Um, this is a repetitive or boring job. So maybe you're in a job and you're you're not ha happy there. Maybe it's time for you to leave. And again, be the truest expression of yourself and be who you truly are and help humanity and step out on with trust and confidence to achieve your goals. This could be somebody who's overspending, lives above their means, is in debt, is lazy, or who is underqualified 
for something. Um, hmm. The Eight of Pentacles could also be somebody who feels that they need to be or who are a perfectionist, which is, is a very unrighteous trait because, you know, that's not something we should really be striving for. This could be some type of repair work that needs to be done or was done, whether it's on something material that you own or the physical body or the mind. This is someone who has a lack of focus or ambition, right? So if this is not your energy, this could be the energy of somebody coming towards you or someone who is around you in your energy. And perhaps this is why the concern card is out here. Maybe that is a cause for concern. Eight of Pentacles also talks about someone who does not have experience. So someone who's inexperienced and who maybe feels overworked. Maybe this is a workaholic that feels like, you know, I'm doing too much for this company. And I should be doing this for myself or to help others who really need it. This is also one someone who may have the need to learn. So maybe you need to learn a new skill. Maybe you've been putting it off. At the bottom of the deck is the Nine of Wands in the reverse. Um, that's Sagittarius energy, more moon energy, and um, more solar plexus chakra energy, which is yellow and fire. This is someone refusing to compromise, give in. This is someone stubborn, rigid, obstinate. And who's considered the last one standing. I'm not going to pull it out, but that may be um, important to note. This is someone who refuses to compromise. And we talked about, you know, an unwillingness to change a little earlier. I think. Was that in this reading or was that another one? <laughs> well, we talked about somebody being hard-headed. That was one of the things then. And then at five is change. And so again, this is someone who's unwilling to compromise, which is in essence, unwilling to change. Um, so let's see, let's clarify the eight of pentacles in reverse right now. Wow. The knight of wands. Knight of wands, Sagittarius which is heart chakra energy. This is all about passion. So someone could be coming toward you with passion or you could have a lot of passion or you could be dealing with someone with a lot of passion. But this would also be someone who's immature and a bit hasty, who is adventurous or wants to be adventurous, moves pretty fast, energetic, charming, warm, exciting, fearless, confident, self-assured, a hero, um, but also rebellious, brave, revolutionary, open-minded, uh, free spirit, sexy, warm, and a harmless flirt. Um, wines are typically representative of like sexual energy, right? Um, not in wines, you know, it could be somebody who's lusty. Um, again, that free spirit where they want to be sexually free. Um, and passionate with multiple people. This could be also creativity. This could also be travel. Um, and in having that sexual energy, and although this came out in the upright, in the reverse, there could be somebody who's sexually excessive, right? Because relationships are not about sex. But because we've been conditioned to live in this porn industry, um, sex sales type of mentality, some people who did not get that love and nurturing as a child have now come to think that getting that nurturing or that lap time or those hugs and kisses needs to come from another partner sexually, right? And that's really the wrong mentality to be in. Um, and this could be somebody who behaves impulsively. So, you know, having sex with multiple partners with no protection and nobody's gotten tested. 
So just kind of just spreading the love like, you know, Woodstock type of mentality. And they think that it's cool or they think that it's funny and it's really not because you're really putting people's lives at risk. But I'm not going to preach. I'm just saying this is what, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing. Despite popular belief, ooh, my legs started falling asleep. Okay. Don't mind my little sealies. Anyway, that's how you make it. You know, take the braids out and it's curly. But anyway, um... Yeah, so, um, Knight of Wands, um, this could be someone who's chaotic, too. <laughs> Again, I'm talking about in the reverse, um, because for some reason I felt like I was supposed to say the upright in the reverse meanings today. And so that's what I'm, I'm just doing, what I was intuitively guided to do. This could be somebody who's impatient, who gets angry, you know, so basically has a bad temper. And I know I rem remember mentioning that earlier. Someone who needs to slow down and focus because they're trying to go too fast and do too much, right? This is that fast moving in. Um, wands move fast, not as quickly as swords, but wands move fast, right? So this is someone who's fast, you know, in terms of... The time frame, um, wands could, I'm uh, sorry, swords could be like minutes, days, or weeks, um, and wands could be days or weeks, even months, but like less than 90 days, months type of thing, whereas your, um, your pentacles are the slowest, and that could be months or years, so. And then uh, cancer kind of, fall, well, I shouldn't say cancer, but water, uh, water falls kind of, you know, in that, in between the wands and the pentacles. So it could be months. Um, yeah, so, um. Yeah, this is someone who needs to, you know, just slow down and focus and think about things before they just start making changes and doing stuff impulsively. And then we have what? The Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> I'm thinking of the game show, right? Um, the Wheel of Fortune is good fortune. Uh, Wheel of Fortune is the number 10, which is one, which is leadership. So you have um, someone who, say, whose names start with the letter A or whose first vowel in their name is A. This could be somebody who's an arrogant leader, like that Leo, right? Then you have the J, which is why the, the letter J was created because, you know, there's a very popular person or character whose name starts with a J. Um, so J represents the leader of the multitudes. And again, that's why, why that particular letter was created because it did not exist before a certain time frame. But I'm not going to get into all of that. Then we have someone whose uh, name starts with uh, the letter S. And S is a self-directed leader. Right, but again, these are not leaders who are arrogant and operating out of ego as if they can just do it all by themselves. This is a leader who still has that village mentality in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Right, but that's if they're they're on their righteous side. But on the, if they're exhibiting unrighteous traits, then they are going to be arrogant and stubborn and impatient and self-centered and all about their ego or all in their ego. And this is root chakra energy. And it's all about, well, I am this and I am that. You know, um, this is earth energy. So the root chakra is earth energy. So they're, they're, that person would be ungrounded, right? 
Uh, and again, their energy would be off. They would be unstable, um, uncomfortable, and feeling unsafe, right? Because they feel like they have to operate out of a ego. That means they're not emotionally grounded and they're not feeling safe because they probably don't have that village mentality. They have an arrogant, egotistical mentality and I am arrogant mentality. Um, this could be a Taurus. This could mean a new start, a new beginning, right? Again, the wheel of fortune. So things turning out in your favor. This is a turning point in your life. This could be someone who gambles. Um, this could also be... Now remember, I'm, at first I was talking about the number 10, which reduces down to a one in numerology and gematria, which is associated with your root chakra because your root chakra is the first chakra, right? Or the base chakra, as some people call it. But the number 10 specifically in tarot, so in the Wheel of Fortune card itself, is the solar plexus chakra, which is two chakras up, right? It's also called the Manipura chakra which is represented by the color yellow, as we see here, and the element of fire. And this is I do. So what are you doing? Again, are you doing things to change your karma, to bring good luck, to, you know, um, change your destiny, to change period, to find your soulmates? Because So this could be soulmate energy. This could be um, having decisive moments this is the cycle of life this is fate this is fortune this is it could be upheaval and it could be change right if this could be taking a chance or quote unquote gambling um i feel like i don't want to talk about it in the reverse i'm going to leave that one right there But, um, I'm just going to say that it could be good luck, fate. Um, this could also deal with things that we cannot control, but that we have to accept and be tolerant and patient, you know, during that process. Because sometimes it takes a while for the wheel to turn, but it eventually turns in our favor because what goes up must come down and vice versa, right? Because um, that wheel of fortune or say a Ferris wheel is constantly going up and down. And you know, as the people are getting on down at the bottom, you're up at the top, you can see everything, you can look around. Um, let's say it's that wheel in Paris, you're up, you can see the entire city. Um, if it's the wheel, a uh, Ferris wheel um, downtown Atlanta, then you can overlook the city of Atlanta. If it's some type of carnival or, you know, you know, those pop-up, what do they call them? Not festival, um, like state fair, you know, type of thing. And they have a Ferris wheel that you can overlook the, the, the grounds of the fair and maybe see into the city or the towns, you know, surrounding it, uh, whatever that means. But anyway, you know, you may be up and stuck for a while. As again, people get on and off, and you can see in all directions, um, all around you. And uh, it could be a good feeling because it's a different perspective, almost like you're a bird. Um, so, yeah. Then we have the King of Cups. And again, the energy could be you, it could be someone around you, it could be someone coming towards you, and it could be masculine or feminine masculine or feminine okay it could be masculine or feminine this could be a pisces right this is more third eye chakra energy or the ajna chakra right this is intuition lucid lucidity meditation and trust this is i see what do you see what is your perception what is your intuition telling you or your third eye or your pineal gland this is emotional intelligence this king of cups energy 
This is someone who's mature, compassionate. Um, it is said to be a mature, compassionate male, but again, in tarot, it is energy. So it, this could be a woman who is more in her masculine energy. And people tend to have a problem with that, but really there's nothing wrong with that because we all should be a balance of masculine and feminine energy. And there are women who were warriors, who were rulers, whether they were called a queen, an empress, a Kandaki, or a, a contessa, whatever it was, right? There are still today and were women who were in leadership positions. And I think that people tend to overlook that or forget that and just want to focus on, you know, thinking that men should just be in control, which is very patriarchal and, you know, not realizing that a lot of societies were matriarchal and that women made a lot of the decisions, a lot of the decisions that are actually still in place today, but they were just taught to us as if they came from a male perspective. But anyway, that's another story too, okay? This is someone who's calm, caring, friendly, sympathetic, wise, tolerant, diplomatic, balanced, affectionate, romantic, charming, devoted, family-oriented, and generous, right? King of Cups is a great parent, someone who's has empathy. And again, I don't like the word understanding, but knowledgeable, you know? So, um, in the reverse, it could be somebody who is abusive or emotionally manipulative, which is not a good thing. This could also be somebody who's cold, right? This could be a warning. Um, but this could also be telling you to trust your intuition and your emotions. Right. So again, we got some great messages from these cards. Let's get a few more. And then close the reading out. I didn't realize I had been on here so long. <laughs> But I intuitively delivered the messages as they came out. So I feel like, you know, these messages weren't necessarily about a specific situation or scenario. I think they were about our own personality traits and characteristics and things that we maybe need to take into consideration of the people, places, and things that could be around us. What a great way to begin ending. And peace is a 23, which is what? A five. Change. Change, making fast friends. And even if you had some not so good people who are around you who were thieves, you may meet new people who are not like that at all because it really depends on your energy and what you're bringing to the table. What are you manifesting? Is your energy, or do you have a high vibrating energy, which is that five energy? to make friends quickly, to learn quickly, to be creative, to be stable, to have good communication, to use your throat chakra in a healthy way. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, so we have the truth be told card, right? Another five, that's a 14, it's another five. So again, are you com communicating truthfully, honestly? Because we are what we attract. We attract who we are and not what we want. So who are you and how are you showing up? Again, are you showing up as someone who is open, ready, willing, and able to change? Who changes quickly? 
who has a high vibrating energy, who, he, who is creative, who makes friends quickly and learns quickly, uses their communication, has an, a balanced throat chakra, and who is healing, healed, or helping and or helping others to heal. This is someone who's blessed or has a blessing or, or, or greatness. I don't really like the word bless because it sounds like you're saying be less, be less, be great, right? This is a 22, which is that master builder or master, um, master, one of the master numbers, a powerful number four. Um, this is someone who can materialize ideas. This is a master creator energy, an idealist, a visionary, and a powerful force. Right? This this could also be, you know, someone who's very zen. Right? Look, flexible. Number 19, which is a 10, which is a 1, who's a great leader, a balanced leader. A balanced leader is not operating out of ego. You know, it's not about being possessive or in control. It's just about making sure that things run smoothly. That they're, they, this person may have a survival instinct and um, want things to be, want there to be security and grounding, right? And you can see this person balancing on an egg. Time to go. Maybe time to do something different. This is 45, which is 9 in Gematria, which is, again, I, as I said earlier, 9s represent completion in Gematria and numerology. This is a humanitarian, a psychic. Someone who's multi-talented. And other may be, others may feel uncomfortable about that, but this person can't help who they are. <laughs> this, this person is is surrounded by light and there are doors that open for this person all the time this person has a lot of spirit guides around them you see the little orbs of light this is like the stairway to heaven type of energy because that's how it exists in their mind Right? The tribe. Remember I kept saying the village. We should have the village mentality. This is eight. This is wealth and power. Right? This is wealth and power by serving others. Having the knowledge to know that we are here to serve each other. To help each other. Not to be dictators. Not to say, oh, I'm better than you because I have this. That's not what we're here to do. Right? Again, this is the tribe. This is the eight. This is the strength card. This is the strength to not be in your ego. This is the strength to be mature. This is the strength to listen. This is the strength to communicate effectively and not interrupt people and cut them off and say, oh, you're wrong. I'm better. I know what I'm talking about. I got this and I got that. This is someone who is in good health and has confidence to know that they can be themselves and love themselves and not have to compete with anybody or anything for or anyone for anything. This is someone who has accurate knowledge. This is someone who loves to share and loves to receive because it's all about giving and receiving. This is a creator, so someone who likes to create and, again, sh share those creations. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. I hope that this reading was very helpful. I know it was helpful for me. And as always, I love y'all. Later. Mwah.